Now, let us look at the finite volume method in the more general uh, context, uh, where we take the conservation equation in the fullest form and then uh, try to uh, convert it into a uh, write it down in a conservation form and then convert it into the flux formulation and then look at uh, uh, how to evaluate the fluxes and how to uh, uh, evaluate the areas and uh, surfaces. So, that using by applying this conservation equation on a single uh, control volume, we will be able to come up the, the uh, conversion of that in uh, uh, into an algebraic equation for the value of the variable in that particular uh, cell. So, that is that is what uh, the finite volume method does. It does not uh, uh, have too much of an effect on the rest of the process of the CFD solution. It defines, it uh, takes a different approach to converting the partial differential equation into an algebraic equation. So, the details of this for the general case where uh, uh, we do it in systematic way, so that uh, there is no confusion arising when we evaluate the surfaces and the fluxes. So, we are looking at a case where we have some domain, closed domain without any leaks like this and this is made up, this is broken up into some sort of tiles. And uh, the idea is that one can have a mixed uh, set of tiles like this, so that the surface here can be faithfully represented. So, the each of these is a control volume and by packing enough of these, we can make sure that the surface is properly uh, represented. So, the overall bounding surface of this forms one of the sides of some of these control elements and if in two dimensions, if you were to use some triangular uh, kind of thing close to the surfaces we can be sure to put uh, uh, to represent even a fairly complicated surface uh, properly by selecting it in this way. So, we in the in the general case, we have the flow domain decomposed in two dimensions into a set of quadrilateral and triangular uh, elements. And when I say quadrilateral, I do not necessarily mean rectangular, you can have uh, a distorted quadrilateral and triangular, it would be ideal to have it as an equilateral triangle, but it can also be distorted uh, uh, triangle. So, so, it is made up of this in such a way that when you put all the tiles together, when you put all the tiles together, you take up the entire area. In the case of three dimensions, we can use a combination of uh, tetrahedrals and then uh, 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 rectangular blocks uh, kind of things to make up the overall volume. Uh, at this uh, introductory stage, we will not really look at uh, uh, the uh, three dimensional aspect, but we can take a, a two dimensional thing and we can see by making the triangle smaller and then larger as necessary to represent the curvature, we can have a, a fairly faithful reproduction of the entire cross section in these two dimensions uh, in which you have the, uh, which constitutes the flow domain, the computational domain of interest and within this, we want to find the variation of phi. we want to for example, find the variation of phi as a function of x and y throughout this. And as usual in our CFD, we do this by writing by evaluating phi at several points i j, not at every point x and y, but at several points i j. And this notation of i j here is appropriate for a structured grid 
just as an xy grid is associated with the Cartesian mesh, you go a certain distance in the x direction, you go a certain distance in the y direction, you get to that. So this ij notation that we have used is for a, a, a structured mesh. You go through so many mesh points in the uh, in the x-axis and so many mesh points along the y-axis direction to get to that particular thing. So this notation here is not very relevant for a uh, for a unstructured mesh that we normally use in finite volume method because there is no specific i direction and j direction this. So associated if we say that this is the overall flow domain two dimensional flow domain which is decomposed into this these uh, individual tiles the cells then for each of these cells we have a particular point the centroid at which the value is uh, determined. So these are the points and we say that this value times this particular uh, area is the total amount of uh, the particular variable in terms of the uh, intrinsic property. So the, this is per unit area per unit mass type of thing. So that is contained in this and one can see that there is no ijk orientation in this. You cannot say that this point is along i uh, first point, second point, third point like this and this is not on the uh, on any uh, intersection like these things. So if you have like this or like this, these are the family of coordinate lines x and y and these are the general uh, coordinate lines for example psi 1, um, okay. eta 1, eta 2, eta 3 and eta 4, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4. This is what we have for the general body fitted type of grid and this is what we have for the Cartesian mesh y1, y2, y3 y4 like this and then one can associate an i and a j for example and an i here and a j here will define this particular point and uh, i plus 1 means j is this point and i i j minus 1 is this point like this. So one can define an i j type of identification for each point on a structured mesh. So this kind of ij notation is no longer valid in an unstructured mesh which, uh, which is a mixture of for example quadrilaterals and triangles and even when you make it uh, uh, entirely of triangles in the general case it is not possible to come up with an ij kind of notation. So we do not uh, when we are talking about the discretization of this we do not use this uh, ij type of thing maybe we use just k a single thing which identifies the particular element number. So when we do this making up of the styles we need to have some numbering scheme associated with this. So we may have first point, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth and so on like this and the idea is that we are evaluating in the process we are evaluating only the value of phi at the center of each of this each tile have us will have a single value of of uh, phi associated with its uh, centroid or some other convenient position and uh, uh, so that is the value that we have so when we talk about the value of phi here the known values we know the value of phi here 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 and here, 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 here. So there is no specific pattern as to where these things are available. So and that is why it is more difficult to come up with a specification of derivatives which are required for uh, uh, the flux terms and the evaluation of the upwinding fluxes that are associated with the, with the um, 
with the advection term. So, in such a case that is why it is very difficult to say we know that uh, a scheme uh, and a, a derivation derivative of, of p th derivative expressed in the form of phi neighboring uh, uh, i's at i to the order of delta x q will require a number of points as p plus q in the case of one sided and p plus q minus 1 in the case of uh, central uh, scheme. All this is valid for a structured mesh and if we were to say that okay, I want to evaluate the uh, flux here at this point to see how much is coming into this and I need to evaluate that with uh, 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 with uh, uh, a fourth order accuracy, then if you are using a central scheme, we need a, a second derivative. So, we need 5 points. So, we may want to have this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. In this particular case, it has come out that they are more or less on the same line, but if you are looking at it here or this point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they are not on the same, same lines. So, that is why it is difficult to come up with higher order accurate schemes for the evaluation of fluxes in a, in a finite volume mixed type of mesh like this, because there is no identification of i and j and this is the structure that is lost when we go to an unstructured mesh and that is why we cannot make use of these, these kind of uh, uh, approximations of arbitrary or desired level of accuracy that is uh, uh, very readily possible in a structured mesh and that is why most of the finite volume methods uh, uh, in most of them the discretization of second order accuracy is considered to be uh, good enough. And if you want more accuracy what you do in a finite volume method is to reduce the number of cells by doing this you are creating two cells. So, the evaluation is now at this point this point. Now, if you want more accuracy, you can you can make it like this, and you can make it this way, and then you can make it even less. So you can arbitrarily, locally refine the grid so that you can get a more number of points in in a particular zone of interest. So this kind of uh, ease by which local refinement is possible in a, in a finite volume method is not there in the case of uh, structured mesh. Here if you want to uh, have the uh, accuracy level increase by reducing the, the grid size, you have to do it like this. You have to introduce one more uh, psi line here and you have to introduce one more eta line here. And this introduction here not only introduces cells, for example, this has reduced the cell size into 4 but it has also done that here, it has also done that here and it will be carried all the way to the boundaries on this side and this side and this side and this side. So, you are not doing any local refinement, you are doing refinement which is stretching far beyond the boundaries that are uh, far beyond the zone of interest and that becomes a point of weakness in the case of uh, structured meshes. So, from that point of view when you look at it from the overall point of view of accuracy of the discretization solution. Structured meshes have the advantage of, uh, 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 of these kind of higher order accurate schemes uh, approximations for derivatives being implemented. They can be implemented in, uh, in structured meshes. Whereas, in the case of unstructured mesh, you do not have the luxury of coming up with higher order schemes, but you have the luxury of locally uh, refining uh, the grid by doing these kind of uh, uh, breakups, it's not as trivial as it sounds here. There has to be it has to be done in a very systematic way. But algorithms are available by which you can uh, uh, do this in in a systematic way, and you can easily do uh, local grid refinement. So, 
and it is truly local in the sense you can concentrate on a particular area and you can make it uh, refined without having to worry about the same kind of re refinement propagating into the other sites and you can also do local grid coarsening. In a typical CFD solution we are going to get uh, uh, estimates of the solution because we are using iterative methods. So that means that before we get the final solution we already have some idea of what is going to be the uh, rough shape of the solution. So in such a case we may want to do uh, we may want to adapt the grid that we have used because the grid in a way defines the order of the level of accuracy of the solution. So where the gradients are large you may want to reduce the grid. Uh, reduce the uh, delta x type of thing okay we reduce the size of the grid and where the gradients are very less where there is no variation for example if you have if you are expecting a variation like this you need to have a small delta x so if you have computed a value uh, which is fluctuating like this then in order to truly seek uh, this uh, this variation you may want to put more number of points here and if you have got a variation almost like this and if you have a grid which is like this then looking at the solution and say that okay there is hardly any variation why not I use a large grid because large grid will reduce the computational time for me and a small grid will increase accuracy. So there is always the struggle to, uh, to, uh, uh, to meet the two counter requirements that, that you have you would like to have as small a grid so that your computation is faster at the same time you want to have as fine a grid as possible so that your, ac your accuracy is high. So that kind of adapting the, lo the grid locally to take advantage of uh, uh, coarsening possibility where the variation is not very rapid or the need for accuracy in the case of uh, rapidly varying uh, uh, quantities by doing a, a grid refinement. So this these kind of things are readily possible in a truly local sense in the case of finite volume method. So this is, uh, this is one of the advantages of the finite volume method and the grid adaptation is uh, one big uh, thing that is uh, considered as a as a uh, as probably the reason for going for uh, a finite volume method and obviously that the possibility of dealing with uh, a complex geometry like this without having to try to uh, get a body fitted grid which which fits these things and all that uh, so there are uh, specific reasons for this so essentially there are possibilities but we can also see some uh, difficulties that are uh, coming here especially from the point of view of discretization that we would have to consider. When we talk about uh, uh, the fluxes when we talk about the finite volume method we are talking in terms of volumetric source terms and uh, uh, surface based uh, uh, flux terms. So we are is distinguishing primarily between uh, volumetric terms which can be integrated over the entire control volume and fluxes which have to be evaluated at uh, the uh, flux at the surfaces at the uh, surface of the closed uh, uh, domain constituting that particular uh, control volume and the control volume need not be only rectangular or uh, uh, only quadrilateral or only triangular it can be a combination of uh, those things as we have seen here and what we also see here is that in this kind of meshing and uh, uh, with the grid refinement all that it is not necessary that one face of this triangle must be shared by one rectangle or another triangle like this. One can see between the control volume 6 and 7 the two triangles this face is being shared by both of them but in this case or in this case here this particular face is being shared by two other things 
and this particular phase is being shared by two other elements. So, that is something that uh, uh, that has to be evaluated properly, because we always want to have when we evaluate the fluxes, we want to have proper flux balance. The flux that is leaving uh, a control volume through one of the phases must go into the adjacent phases to the same by the same amount. If a flux of 100 is leaving the uh, uh, control volume uh, of, of one particular phase of the control volume, then this 100 must go into the adjacent control volume through that particular phase or adjacent control volumes through that particular phase. And uh, this is very important because for uh, in our as we have seen in, uh, in the simple example, we evaluate for each control volume for each control surface we evaluate the fluxes and then we make a balance out of it and based on that we, we convert the partial differential equation into algebraic equation. But so when we deal with each control volume separately and when we for example, when after discretizing this we go to the discretization of this element here. This element has three surfaces and through each of them there is a flux and so part of the flux which is coming through this phase is coming from, uh, from this uh, uh, is leaving this particular uh, phase of the control volume. So now we have an element 4 here let us say that this is uh, A and B and then you have you have two triangular control volumes which are adjacent to this and if you now put A B C D like this and E. So, the surfaces for cell 4 are A B B D and A D and for cell A the surface are D E C and C D and cell B it is E B B C and C E. So, we must when we evaluate the fluxes for uh, phase 4. So, you have a flux associated with A B, flux associated with B D and flux associated with uh, A D and similarly we have the flux components associated with each of these, uh, these things and in the evaluation there must be a condition which says that F B D for cell 4 that is this one the total surface which is flux which is leaving through this surface is equal to the flux E B for control volume B plus the flux E D for control volume A. Only then one can say that the flux that is leaving uh, this control volume is going into the adjacent control volumes. If this is not satisfied there is a mistake there is an imbalance between the flux leaving this and flux coming into this. So, when we evaluate the fluxes for each of this, these things we have to make sure that this kind of condition is satisfied and I am also being very loose in uh, making this definition because uh, uh, we are evaluating the uh, flux through each of these and uh, in the process we have to look at the flux direction. We have to see that we are taking uh, when you say that um, we have used uh, F for the flux dotted with N. Okay. So, <coughs> we will see we, when we put a proper notation F is the flux is the for example, this is the gradient and N is the normal vector. So, we have to evaluate the dot product here. So, that means that we have to have an idea of what is the outward normal vector for each of the phases. So, we 
we have to see that this particular phase here when we consider 4 is the outward normal vector in this direction. When you consider element A here the outward normal vector is in this direction again for B it is in this direction. So, we have to make sure that the evaluation of each of these fluxes is done with the appropriate orientation of the uh, outward normal vectors. So, and one way of ensuring this is to for each cell when we define the phases uh, like this we always take the counterclockwise direction. So, we talk about F A B, F B D and F D A. Again for this particular cell here we go in the counterclockwise direction. So, we say B C E and then back to B. So, this goes in this direction and here it goes in this direction and here it goes in this direction. Now, for uh, cell C D E if you uh, again apply the counterclockwise direction it this goes like this this comes here and this comes here. So, when you are <coughs> when you are looking at uh, uh, cell 4 you are traversing this whole length in the counterclockwise direction that is in this direction like this from B to E and D to uh, E E to D. But for this cell you are traversing this in the opposite direction. So, this part will get cancelled with this and again for this you are traversing this in the opposite direction. So, this part will get traversed in this. So, by consistently using uh, a counterclockwise direction to define the bounding surfaces of each element we can make sure that this sort of the outward normal vector for each phase is uh, identified. So, if you have a phase like this and this is the control volume. So, that we can see the control volume is to the left of this then this is the outward normal vector of this particular surface. So, the outward normal ve vector rise to the right of uh, okay. So, uh, if, if the control volume is to the left then this uh, goes to the right and we are going in the counterclockwise direction. So, if the same surface the control volume is in this direction to the right here then if we go in this direction we are going in the clockwise direction. So, by adopting it in by going through this control volume in the counterclockwise direction the same distance or the same phase is is being traversed in the downward direction that means that the outward normal vector is again in this direction ok. So, it is it is moving it is if you are traversing in the direction of the counterclockwise direction the count the surface normal vector is to the right to your right and the control volume is to the left. And if the flux vector is aligned in the outward normal direction then it is flux leaving this and if the flux vector is aligned in the opposite direction then it is flux coming into this. So, here if you have a flux direction here like this then this flux dotted with this one can see that it is leaving the surface. The same flux vector acting on this will be a flux which is coming inside uh, uh, ok. So, uh, in that direction in that sense the flux dotted with uh, the proper uh, uh, surface normal direction will make sure that will automatically consider whether it is flux that is coming in or going out. Uh, and we have to make sure that the evaluation of the flux is done consistently it is a vector quantity and the evaluation of the outer outward normal uh, uh, vector associated with the phase is also done properly. So, it is important to retain this uh, directionality of the defining of the definition of uh, uh, the phase in order to maintain this. The flux is always as per the uh, for example, if you say the flux has some rho u phi which is the uh, 
convective component and the only vector is the u here. So, this follows the convective flux follows the direction of, uh, of uh, the velocity and the diffusive flux is typically like some gamma gradient of phi. So, this follows the gradient direction. So, the, the direction of the flux is fixed by the velocity in the case of uh, convection and the gradient of phi in the case of uh, uh, diffusive flux and this has nothing to do with the area and all these things. Okay, It is nothing to do with the geometric of the cell, but the normal component of this is has everything to do it has only thing to do with uh, with the orientation of the of the surface and by maintaining directionality here uh, in the counterclockwise direction consistently one can also use counterclock uh, clockwise direction consistently but for each element we have to make sure that the element is defined in the in the uh, clockwise direction or on anti clockwise direction and the evaluation of fluxes must be done in the way that is consistent with the uh, with the evaluation evaluation of the individual components velocity defining the direction of the uh, convective flux and the gradient of phi determining this. So, by evaluating this then we can make sure that this condition is implicitly satisfied. There is one more uh, 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 condition here that the evaluation of fluxes must be the same for this particular phase whether we are considering it as an outward flux or inward flux. So, that is the evaluation of the fluxes should depend on the phi values in a consistent way that when you are considering uh, for example, this surface here this control volume here you are trying to evaluate the flux coming through this. Now, that flux obviously depends on the value of phi at this point. Now, when you consider the flux which is coming through this point for this cell here, then if you if you evaluate it using the value here, then there may be some inconsistency uh, in uh, uh, in the evaluation of flux here in terms of rho u phi and uh, gradient phi. When you consider this phase as being belonging to this and as this phase being belonging to this, so the definition of the evaluation of the flux must also be consistent that the quantity of f that is being attributed for example, to this phase is the same whether you are considering this this cell or this cell. And similarly uh, what should change is obviously, the direction of the outward normal vector for each of this only then we can make sure that the consistency in the flux and overall conservation of flux is satisfied. So, this is one important element in the overall discretization of uh, the control volume method. If this is not satisfied then we will we'll have great difficulties. Okay, now, let us look at uh, the evaluation of the fluxes we have looked at uh, uh, how that uh, area has to be evaluated and uh, uh, in order to preserve the flux it is important that uh, the flux is also determined in such a way that uh, when we consider a particular phase being uh, part of uh, uh, belonging to one particular control volume and an adjacent control volume the actual value of the flux must be the same uh, must be evaluated to be the same. So, how is it possible let us take uh, uh, the case of two dimensions and let us say that we have uh, dou phi by dou t plus del dot uh, f the flux equal to some q as the source term and we are integrating with respect to volume and we are putting here in the flux all the terms which will appear on the surfaces. So, that we can write this for a particular uh, uh, cell as dou phi by dou t. Now, 
since we are concentrating on uh, two dimensions, we will call it integration over the area. And this value will become, let us say that area of the cell is A here plus n dot uh, f times d L over the control uh, perimeter over the closed surface. Uh, let us put volume here and we understand implicitly what we mean by, we understand implicitly that in the third dimension the uh, length is uh, unit value, okay, control surface equal to q times volume of the cell. So, this we evaluate as dou phi by dou t volume of the cell plus sum over uh, for example, the sides a b c d of uh, n dot f d a equal to q times volume of the cell. And our particular uh, this may be our uh, uh, cell here with the value of phi i given there with uh, some other cell adjacent to this some other cell here. So, this is all part of uh, uh, part of the interior part of the flow domain and we are looking at one particular cell which is denoted by uh, a b c d here. And uh, so, we can take uh, as usual this sort of counterclockwise direction and we can expand this as uh, n dot f uh, times, uh, okay. now uh, n here has, if you consider let us say a surface b c, the line b c here. So, the integral of this over B c plus integral over A b plus integral over C d plus uh, D a like that. So, this can be written as uh, if you consider the flux to have x and y components and this one also to have a surface vector which is oriented like this and let us say the flux vector is oriented like this. We have f x and uh, uh, f x dotted with uh, uh, s x and that can be written as f x times y c minus y b minus f y times x c minus x b. Okay. So, this this is the end product is a scalar and for the case of 2 d where b here has x b y b as the coordinates and this has x c y c as the coordinates. Then we can say that uh, uh, this value can be expressed in terms purely of the coordinate points and this is where the evaluation of uh, the area through which flux is passing based only on the coordinate points will be useful because when we evaluate the flux for this particular control volume and this will be in the negative uh, uh, direction. So, and at that point it will become uh, uh, for example, this become y b minus y c and this will become uh, uh, x b minus x c. So, that uh, whatever that is treated as positive for this will be treated as negative. So, the, the different uh, directional sensitivity of the area uh, vector okay, 
is coming in this definition whereby the overall area through which flux is passing each of this is multiplied by delta z which is unity and which uh, defines that uh, surface. Okay. So, in that sense this satisfies the constraint that the area evaluation that is delta c b de delta y c b times delta z is done in such a way that for counterclockwise direction it is one value and for clockwise direction it will be the, uh, it will be the opposite with equal magnitude. So, and we can similarly write for each phase with C D and D A and uh, A B evaluated in, in this way, we can take the end the vertices of the points which define this uh, control volume and then we can come up with uh, the area evaluation like this. Okay. So, uh, in that way we still have to worry about what is F X and what is F Y. Essentially the evaluation of the fluxes is uh, uh, the remaining part and we know that the fluxes also have to be evaluated in such a way that when we talk about this particular phase whether it belongs to this control volume or this control volume the amount of flux calculated should be the same. Okay. So, if that is if that condition were to be satisfied we have a phi i value associated with this and we have a phi j value associated with this particular cell if you call this as cell i and cell j with b c as the common phase through which flux is uh, passing being exchanged between the two things. Then this evaluation of fluxes which is typically a function of phi value you have the diffusive flux which depends on the gradient and uh, the convective flux which depends on the velocity and also the phi value of that particular uh, scalar. So, in that sense this is a function of phi and the evaluation must be such that it should be using the same values of phi to evaluate the, uh, the flux. So, one possibility is that you can write this as uh, a function of phi i and phi j where phi i and phi j are the values of the variables across which this particular uh, uh, phase is common. So, when we evaluate this the flux through this then we can you make use of this value and for example, phi k and phi l and phi m. So, whenever we look at the evaluation of the flux through this phase then we make use of only these values and we do not bring in this and uh, in such a way when we make evaluate the flux through this phase which is common to these two then we can make use of this. Now, the same argument can be extended to a case where uh, for example, this particular phase is being shared by two cells j k and l. Then in, in this case the evaluation of the flux through this particular phase for cell j must be such that this component is evaluated separately and this component is evaluated separately with the corresponding points so let us say a b c as per the uh, corresponding uh, areas coming into picture here and when we compute the flux through these two phases the, the these two cells through this phase we make use of j and k here and for uh, this boundary we make use of these two things and then add them together to get the overall flux through this phase. Again when we do that we are making sure that the amount of flux which is evaluated is consistent for those control volumes which have that particular part as one of the boundaries. So, if we do this and if we make sure that the area evaluation is based only on the vertices which are uh, uh, common vertices then the overall flux conservation equation can be readily established. So, here we are now <coughs> uh, uh, 
we have now decided that the uh, flux should be evaluated for this thing through the two common uh, uh, through the cell values of phi at these two things. So, if again in flux we have diffusive flux and when we talk about diffusive flux we are looking at evaluation of gradient gradient of phi and this gradient can be definitely estimated from as phi i minus phi j or uh, uh, something like that. Okay. Um, so, the evaluation of the gradient is readily uh, uh, is clear when we talk about involving these two things. Now, what about convective flux or convective or advective flux? So, this is where it we have to be more systematic and more careful because advective flux is something like rho u phi and we know that uh, this particular uh, advective flux must be evaluated in the proper way that is not using uh, uh, central referencing, but using the fact that uh, advective flux follows in uh, the proper direction of the velocity. Therefore, we would like to use an upwind scheme for the uh, evaluation of the of the flux here. Okay, so, and how can we make use of uh, uh, upwind flux upwind uh, uh, thing here? Uh, so, now we can uh, uh, say that that the convective flux, which we can call as FC. Uh, dotted with the area is equal to the flux uh, okay so essentially what we are looking at is the u dotted with the velocity vector dotted with uh, the area vector So, if the velocity vector dotted with the area vector is greater than 0, then that means that flow is coming from this side and the convective flux here is based on the phi i value and the corresponding u value here. And if this is less than 0, so in which case the convective flux is based on phi i and u i. And if u dot a is less than 0, then it should be the flow is coming from this side and in which case this should be based on phi j u j. Okay, so, in, in that sense we can uh, uh, make sure that the upwinding is, uh, is honored here and uh, the sense of upwinding uh, where convective flux can go from left to right or right to left depending on the local velocity is, uh, uh, is, is evaluated in this way. Mm. And so, this is, uh, this, this is probably the e simplest way of in, in, uh, evaluating the uh, convective flux in the sense of uh, in in a, a finite volume method in an unstructured method and one can immediately see that if you wanted to evaluate the uh, convective flux with the second order or third order thing where we would like to evaluate uh, we would like to introduce more number of points then uh, with this kind of spread <coughs> it is difficult to uh, it is difficult to uh, make it more than first order. So, typically in finite volume method we have first order uh, evaluation of the of the advection and second order evaluation 
uh, of the uh, diffuse flux. There are definitely methods which uh, uh, have gone up to second order evaluation of uh, the uh, of the advection by reconstructing the direction from the existing uh, values of the velocities and that involves much more work but otherwise we can uh, we can use this uh, simplistic approach based on the local velocity information we can either make use of we, we should always make use of the upwind upstream values of the uh, variable in order to evaluate the uh, convective flux. Okay. So, that is with the, that thing we can have uh, an evaluation of the flux as well as the areas. Uh, so, that the total quantity of the uh, of the phi which is coming through the phases is evaluated based on the local parameters and uh, in, in that way we can make use of uh, we can make use of we can ensure flux conservation when evaluated for different uh, uh, different control volumes which have that and of course it's one can also ensure the same thing by making sure that making uh, some sort of uh, account entry of the flux that is evaluated through this and when we realize that this cell has uh, uh, is is connected to this then we do not make a separate evaluation of the flux through this we make uh, this flux coming through this already as taken as evaluated and then put it uh, through this way. And in cases like that here one can evaluate the total flux leaving through this and then based on some sort of area weighting we can evaluate uh, the uh, uh, we can apportion the total flux leaving. Uh, into parts which are coming into this and this together. So, we have to be careful in the evaluation of the fluxes for different cells. So, that whatever the flux that is leaving goes into uh, and whatever the flux that is going into the adjacent control volume are uh, one and the same. And the evaluation of the areas and all those things are based on the vertex points. So, that the areas are computed the same way. So, if you do this then the discretization of the governing equation put in the conservation form using this approach becomes very flexible and it can be used for uh, any complicated uh, uh, n sided uh, polygon which would form the control volume and we can take advantage of this to deal with any complicated geometry involving uh, for example a circle inside uh, a rectangle block which is preventing flow from going through. So, this circle here can be made into number of uh, sides like this and now we can put control uh, we can put tiles here. And uh, the interior can now be made into uh, polygons and so on like this. So, that using these triangular elements we can make uh, uh, a proper uh, we can take proper account of the shape of the uh, of the domain here of the uh, flow domain and it can be uh, readily matched with anything else. So, making use of uh, rectangular combination of rectangular and triangular elements in two dimensions we can take account of fairly complicated flow geometry and since the discretization of things does not depend on the coordinate direction and so on it makes it easy for us to uh, develop an equation for a particular uh, uh, value of the variable in a particular domain by consisting of by looking at all the fluxes. And this finite volume method also enables the uh, uh, boundary conditions to be uh, uh, incorporated in a natural way. If a flux value is specified uh, through this then that flux can be readily taken into account when evaluating this. So, we do not make a separate uh, statement uh, separate evaluation of the flux. The flux that is specified as part of the boundary conditions uh, uh, 
will be will be used in evaluating the flux coming through that particular phase. So the in that sense uh, uh, that makes it possible. And as a final note, if you apply finite volume method to a structured grid, we tend to we would get the same equations for the same degree of accuracy for uh, uh, as we would get using finite uh, difference method, except the only difference may be in the incorporation of the boundary conditions. Uh, there you might find some difference between a finite difference method and a finite volume method. Uh, otherwise, finite volume method applied to uh, a structured mesh is not going to give us vastly different results. But uh, when it is when it is applied to this kind of combination of these uh, 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 tile elements, then the power of uh, finite uh, volume method comes through. And as mentioned earlier, if we want to do local refinement and all that, then doing this uh, uh, using that uh, uh, in a finite volume method is uh, uh, is fairly straightforward. So that is where the advantage of the finite volume method comes through, and uh, the overall puzzle of solving the flow for something like this is not yet over. We have looked at how to discretize the governing equation using finite volume method and then convert it into uh, uh, an algebraic equation. But for this method to work, we should be able to uh, uh, cut out the overall flow domain into tiles such that the complete uh, available area is accounted for. And uh, uh, we make uh, tiles which are not overlapping with each other or crossing with each other. So that, that sort of grid generation is very important and uh, uh, that is what we need to understand before we can say that we are able to tackle the uh, uh, finite volume method or the solution method for a complicated geometry which we will deal with that in the next lecture.